You've probably seen the articles and memes going around that claim that 56% of Americans don't think Arabic numerals should be taught in school. Now this is a misleading survey and it's almost certainly due to the fact that respondents don't know that Arabic numerals are the same numbers that we use every day. But it still raises some interesting questions. Like are Arabic numerals really the best system out there for us? And if we were to throw them out, what would we replace them with? How do you reinvent something as fundamental as numbers? Well, these were the types of problems that were presented to a group of students at Harold Kaveolik School in the small Arctic town of Kaktovik, Alaska. And to understand the problem, you first have to understand that the Inupiaq language, like all Inuit languages, doesn't count in base 10, but instead in base 20 with a sub-base of 5. This is actually really common with many indigenous groups in the Americas. Let's take, for example, the Mayan counting system, which dates back to around 250 AD, and it involves a system of lines, dots, and shells. The numbers 1 through 4 are represented by dots, and groups of 5 are represented by lines. That means in one group, you can get up to the number 19. Anything bigger than 19 would use positional notation, represented by a new dot or line in the twenties place. This means that instead of the tens, one hundreds, and thousands places like we have in base 10, Mayans used the twenties place, the four hundreds place, and the eight thousands place. So while one, two, three, four might be 1,234 in base 10, in base 20, it's actually equal to 8,864. But what does this have to do with the little kids in Kaktovik? Well, all the way on the other side of the continent, the Inuits count in much the same way. And it was this difference that made the kids notice that there weren't enough Arabic numerals to represent Inupiaq numbers. They experimented by using other symbols and letters to stand in for the missing numbers, but they found it confusing and hard to remember. So they decided to create their own system, and to do that, they gave themselves five goals. First, the letters should be simple, that is, easy to read and remember. They should also be iconic and reflect the meaning and the way that they're spoken. They should be efficient in that they should be easy and quick to write. They should be distinctive, which means that they should look very different from Arabic numerals so people don't get confused. And finally, they should be aesthetically pleasing. What they came up with was perhaps the most elegant counting system in the world. Similar to Mayan numbers, each digit is represented by single strokes, with vertical strokes representing the numbers 1 through 4, and horizontal strokes representing sets of 5, meaning that 1 through 19 can be represented by a single glyph. And the way the numbers are written has a direct connection to how they're spoken, for example, the Inupiaq word for seven is Talimat Malguk, which means five, two. And the way of writing this is a five on top and a two on bottom. But what they weren't expecting was how well these numbers handle arithmetic. Let's start with addition. When you add two and two, in Arabic numerals, the twos look nothing like the four. But in Kaktovic numerals, these two parts look just like the sum, with a 2 and a 2. And subtraction is even easier. Let's look at this, 17 minus 7 equals 10. In subtraction, you literally just remove the strokes from the first digit, and what you're left with is the difference. We'll take off the one horizontal line from 7, and the two vertical lines leaving us with the two horizontal lines representing 10. But where it gets really fascinating is how it handles division. We'll start off with the formula 1503 divided by 3 equals 501. Now 1503 in Kaktovik is written like this. Let's remember that we have a 3 in the 400s place, giving us 1200. We also have three strokes in the twenties place, however, they're horizontal instead of vertical, which means we have 15 of them, giving us 300. 
And finally, we have three strokes in the ones place, giving us three, for a total of 1,503. We're going to take all of this and divide it by three. With Koktovic numbers, you don't actually have to know what these represent. You just look for how many times your divisor appears in the dividend. We can see it once here in the 400s place, so we'll mark down a 1 in the quotient. Next, we can see it fits in the 20s place, however, it's rotated, so we'll mark a 1 in the quotient again, and we'll rotate it to match. Then we can see that it appears once more in the 1s place, giving us a total of 501. This is division that even a small child could understand. And it handles remainders visually as well. Here's the number 364, and we're going to divide that by 3. We can see that our 3 fits twice in the 20s place, once rotated and once not rotated. So up on top, we'll add a 1 rotated and a 1 that's not rotated. We can see that it also fits in the ones place once. However, there's an extra stroke left over, so we'll add our one up on top. That gives us six in the twenties place for 120, and one in the ones place, so our total is 121 with a remainder of one. These can also be used for complex long division problems. To see a much better video that explains this, Please check out this video on YouTube by Edgar Grunewald. Now up until now, this might seem like little more than just a fun thought experiment, but it actually had real world results. The students who created this system began teaching it to the younger students, and it eventually was added to the local curriculum. Math scores in Koktovic were typically in the lower 20th percentile. But in 1997, just two years after these numbers were introduced, math scores shot up above the national average. When these students went off to high school in Barrow, Alaska, they got permission to teach these numbers to the local middle schools in the area, and it spread there as well. These are now widely used among Inuit people all over the US and Canada, and their use in immersion schools has revived the Inuit way of counting, which was falling out of favor. These numbers helped Inuit kids see that math was something deeply connected to their own culture and not just something imposed on them by European settlers. And this isn't the only example where incorporating local culture and language had a huge impact. These are Cherokee syllabaries, and they work similar to Japanese kana in which each letter represents a full syllable. These were created in the 1820s by a man named Sequoia, and they immediately spread through the Cherokee nation. Soon after, Cherokee newspapers such as the Cherokee Phoenix or the Cherokee Advocate adopted them, and before long, the majority of Cherokee people became fluent in Sequoia's script. This at a time when only about one-third of English speakers were literate. News of the success of Cherokee syllabaries spread through other tribes in the U.S. and inspired similar scripts, such as the Cree syllabary, which achieved almost complete literacy in their tribe. Sequoia's syllabary also included its own number system, although it wasn't nearly as popular. So for those Americans who responded that they were against teaching children Arabic numerals, might I suggest the very own U.S. homegrown Koktobic numbers. <laughs>